on October 30, 2025, precisely at 0 hours 30 UTC, 3i Atlas passed perihelion at 1.4 astronomical units, 130 million kilometers from the Sun. This marks the culmination of a four-month international observation campaign, the most comprehensive study of an interstellar object in the history of planetary science. The object displays spectroscopic signatures that fundamentally deviate from solar comets. Its chemical composition indicates formation conditions distinctly different from those of our solar system. The outgassing dynamics do not follow established models of cometary activity. 3i LASS is more than another interstellar visitor. It is a direct sample of extrasolar planetary formation, a frozen time capsule from a stellar system that formed its comets 7 billion years ago. And the data now arriving force a reassessment of fundamental assumptions about cometary chemistry. A question for discussion. Could the observed differences between interstellar and solar comets be substantial enough to fundamentally revise existing planetary formation theories? The comments are open for scientific discourse. Three confirmed interstellar objects define our entire empirical basis for extrasolar small bodies. One Apabu, Aksagarij October 2017, hyperbolic orbital eccentricity of 1.20, no detectable coma or outgassing. Photometric variations suggested an extremely elongated object, possibly with an axis ratio of 10 to 1. The non-gravitational acceleration upon leaving the inner solar system remained anomalous. Too weak for thermal outgassing, too strong for pure radiation pressure. No satisfactory physical explanation exists to date. 2i Borisov discovered August 2019, eccentricity 3.36, a conventional active comet. Spectroscopic signatures, CNC2 ratios, dust to gas ratios, OH emissions, fell entirely within the range of solar comet populations. The object served as a control. It demonstrated that interstellar objects need not necessarily be anomalous. 3i slash, discovered July 2025, hyperbolic orbit with velocity of 61 kilometers per second relative to the barycentric reference frame. Perihelion distance 1.403 AU. Already at five astronomical units, the object showed measurable coma activity in Hubble images. This lies far outside the typical sublimation boundary for water ice at approximately 3 AU. This early activation was the first indicator of deviant composition. The data situation is unprecedented. Four months of continuous observation before perihelion, multi-wavelength spectroscopy, high-resolution imaging, thermal infrared measurements. No interstellar object has ever been so thoroughly characterized. Spectroscopic analysis reveals fundamental deviations from the solar comet population. Hubble Space Telescope spectra from July and August showed dominant CO2 emissions in the 4.26 micrometer vibrational rotational band. Carbon monoxide was also strongly present at 4.67 micrometers. The OH band at 0.308 micrometers, the primary indicator for water vapor production, was significantly underrepresented. The measured production ratio QCO2 to QH2O lies at approximately 3 to 1. For comparison, solar comets typically show ratios of 0.01 to 0.1. 3i Atlas deviates by two orders of magnitude. This dominance of carbon oxides over water indicates condensation conditions at lower temperatures and greater distances from the central star than for solar comets. The molecular cloud from which 3i Atlas formed was presumably colder, or the object formed farther out in its home system. The nickel detection in September added another anomaly. Nikolai emission lines at 3.414 and 3.461 angstroms showed production rates of approximately 10 to the 25th atoms per second. Nickel is not unknown in cometary spectra, but this intensity typically corresponds to nuclei that are fragmenting or under extreme thermal stress. 3i Atlas shows no signs of fragmentation. The nickel emission originates from regular sublimation. The conclusion is unequivocal. The refractory component, silicates, metals, rocky material, is significantly higher than in solar comets. The dust to ice ratio is fundamentally shifted, the James Webb Space Telescope conducted targeted observations between August 15th and 20th, NIR spec for high-resolution spectroscopy, MIRI for thermal infrared imaging. The NIR spec data confirmed carbon dominance and identified additional molecular species. More importantly, they detected ice absorption bands. The 3.0 micrometer H2O ice band and the 4.27 micrometer CO2 ice band originate not from gaseous emissions, but from solid particles in the tail ice grains ejected from the nucleus that have not yet completely sublimated. Analysis of band depth and spectral width enables conclusions about grain size distribution. 
Modeling reveals a bimodal distribution, a population of small grains under 10 micrometers and a population of larger grains around 100 micrometers. This deviates from the typical power law distribution of solar comets. A bimodal structure indicates two distinct formation mechanisms, primary condensation from the protoplanetary disk plus secondary aggregation through particle collision. MIRI imaging revealed pronounced asymmetry in the coma structure. Surface brightness varies by 30% between different position angles. Collimated jet structures are visible, directed gas outflows originating from discrete active regions on the rotating nucleus. From the temporal variation of these jets, a rotation period can be derived. Preliminary photometry data suggests 12 to 14 hours, though this requires confirmation through longer observation series. The perihelion event on October 30th mobilized all available observational resources, JWST, Hubble, the Parker Solar Probe, and the Stereo A spacecraft were in favorable geometry. The Parker Solar Probe was positioned at 0.7 AU from the Sun, nearly in conjunction with 3I Atlas. The Whisper wide-angle cameras documented significant coma expansion. Photometric data show an integrated brightness of approximately magnitude 6.5, nearly one magnitude brighter than conservative prediction models expected. This indicates elevated outgassing rates, activity exceeded projected values, Ground-based observatories in Chile and South Africa, the only sites with suitable observation geometry and clear skies, documented discrete brightness outbursts. These transient events lasted 10 to 30 minutes and showed magnitude increases of 0.3 to 0.5. These flares are consistent with thermal stress cracking of the nucleus surface. Uneven solar heating creates temperature gradients. Frozen CO2 beneath the surface crust sublimates and builds pressure. When the structural integrity of the crust is exceeded, an explosive gas release occurs. This phenomenon has been observed in solar comets like Hartley 2 and Temple 1, but never with the intensity and frequency seen in 3I Atlas. The most plausible explanation lies in heterogeneous composition. If the nucleus consists of domains with different ice to refractory ratios, CO2-rich regions adjacent to water-richer zones, these sublimate at different temperatures. Thermomechanical stresses arise at the interfaces, the observed jets could be localized along these compositional boundaries, where structural weaknesses exist. On October 3rd, the closest Mars flyby occurred at 0.195 AU, 29 million kilometers distance. This geometry offered a unique opportunity for high-resolution observations through Mars orbiters. The European Space Agency activated the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter and Mars Express. The CASAS camera on TGO is a multispectral color instrument. The published images show a diffuse white dot against the stellar background. Unspectacular by visual standards, valuable for spectroscopic analysis, however, the TGO instruments, primarily designed for Mars atmospheric chemistry, conducted opportunistic measurements of coma composition. The data remain under embargo pending peer review publication, but informal conference reports suggest confirmation of CO2 dominance and additional trace gases, an interesting detail, the NASA Perseverance rover documented a light streak in the Martian sky on October 6th. Geometric analysis shows that 3I Atlas could theoretically have been visible from the Martian surface at this time, albeit extremely faint. NASA has not officially commented on this observation. The US government was in shutdown during this period, which delayed public communications. The correlation remains speculative, but plausible. 3I Atlas now moves on an outbound trajectory. Current solar distance is approximately 1.5 AU and increasing steadily. Activity should decrease but not cease entirely. CO2 driven comets can remain active even at 3 to 4 AU. The sublimation temperature of CO2 is only 159 Kelvin, significantly below that of water ice. Early December will see the object become accessible again to ground based telescopes after passing solar conjunction. This opens a second critical observation window. The post-perihelion phase is scientifically as valuable as the approach. Comparative spectroscopy before and after perihelion enables detection of surface changes and characterization of sublimation layering in the nucleus. In March 2026, Jupiter passage occurs at approximately 2 AU distance, too far for gravitational perturbations, but potentially within detection limits of the Juno probe. No official observation campaign has been announced, but the opportunity exists. After Jupiter, the final exit phase, 3I Atlas will leave the solar system with an escape velocity of approximately 60 kilometers per second. In 10,000 years, it will traverse the Oort cloud. In 50,000 years, it returns to interstellar space. Three critical questions dominate current scientific discussion. 
First, nuclear size. Current estimates range from 440 meters to five and a half kilometers. This uncertainty results from the difficulty of distinguishing between light scattering from the nucleus and emission from the coma. Size determines total mass and thus the structural evolution of the object. Second, formation conditions. CO2 dominance and high nickel concentrations suggest formation at low temperatures and greater stellar distances. But which stellar type? Metallicity of the parent star? System age at comet formation? These parameters remain unconstrained. A particularly interesting hypothesis, 3i Atlas, could originate from a system that had a close stellar companion. Binary stars create more complex gravitational environments. Comet formation in such systems might produce different compositional profiles. Third, frequency. Three interstellar objects detected in eight years. Statistical extrapolation suggests a steady population at any given time, at least one interstellar object within 5 AU of the sun. Most remain undetected, too small, too dark, too fast. The detection rate will increase dramatically with the Vera Rubin Observatory beginning 2026. Projections estimate 10 to 20 detections annually. If these projections prove accurate, the sample will increase tenfold within five years. Statistical analyses of compositional variations become possible. We could identify clustering groups of objects with similar chemistry, possibly from the same home system. In the coming weeks, perihelion data will be processed, spectra calibrated, light curves analyzed, thermal models refined. Dozens of papers are in preparation. The first wave is expected late November. Peer review typically takes two to four months for high profile discoveries but the preliminary data are unequivocal. 3i Atlas is not a replication of 2i Borisov. It is fundamentally different. The chemical signature speaks of a stellar system with divergent condensation conditions, possibly a different stellar type or metallicity. Each interstellar object is a direct sample of extrasolar planetary formation, a physical fragment from a system we will never directly visit. 3i Atlas leaves us soon, but the data remain, a library of seven billion year old chemistry, a message from the depths of space, encoded in spectral lines and sublimation curves, awaiting interpretation